Hey guys, welcome back to another video. So today we're doing another full self-driving experience on my Tesla Model 3 2024 Highland Edition. I'm running version 13.2.1 for the full self-drive. So I'm going to go ahead and put my destination in here. If you have not checked out my last video, I'm getting a lot of comments from you guys in terms of the situation in which the car almost went on a red light at an intersection. So I highly suggest you go back and check out that video. Um, it was a uh, situation in which my car during the full self drive thought that the light turned green, um, but in reality it was red and it almost went on a red light. So I was able to intervene and I was able to disengage that very quickly, thankfully. So I highly recommend you go check that video out if you haven't already. And thank you for all the likes, comments, and new subscribers. So if you're new to the channel, I really appreciate your support. So let's go ahead and turn on full self-driving. So we'll see how it does. Um, overall version 13, like I said in the last video, has been nothing but awesome. Uh, the disengagement that I had done yesterday did occur for the second time. So that was my second time ever having to disengage version 13 out of probably five or six drives. So. And, um, and again, that was a very scary situation. That was um, something that I hope the Tesla team takes very seriously. I did report that back to them. Uh, I was able to flag that really quickly and send that report back. So, and again, I'm get, I've been getting a lot of comments from that situation and um, you know, I really, really appreciate all the feedback um, and interesting insights as well. I, I um, really wish that Tesla as a, as a company provided customers with diagnostic reports in terms of um, you know what had happened in that situation or situations similar to that all customers can do and I encourage everybody to do this is to send that data back to the team so in case you uh, face a similar situation like that all you have to do is press the mic button during the disengagement of a FSD and then you can record your voice kind of give a really quick summary of what had happened back to the Tesla team. It sends it back to uh, their headquarters and then they pull the logs, they pull the footage, they kind of gather what had happened and make uh, the software better. So in terms of providing feedback, I, I highly encourage it. I try and do it all the time myself. I don't typically, oh, I don't always remember to do it, but I, I'll try my best uh, in a situation like that to send that data back because that's how the software gets better um, and feedback is really important in situations like that so again thank you for all the comments from that video uh, and a lot of interesting insights and i'll continue to root cause that situation um, and determine what happened i still don't really understand um, it's still kind of a mystery to me why i decided to go on red um, but i'm gonna continue to root cause it the best i can so Overall, version 13, though, is absolutely amazing. It is smooth, it is confident, it is consistent, and so I'm very happy with it. Um, that was just a kind of a, a, a freak situation, if you will. I mean, that was just a really kind of a unfortunate uh, situation that happened in my previous video. But other than that, it's been smooth. You'll see here, um, you know, that this ride should go fairly well. We're uh, about 6.7 miles away now from the destination with a 15 minute drive. So we'll see how this does. Um, again, it's the, the jump from version 12 to 13 has been just awesome. Now, when you do face a situation like I had faced in the previous video in terms of the car trying to go at a red light, it does change your perspective. And I got a few of you guys saying the same thing is that like when something like that happens, your perspective shifts and so I feel myself now being um, more attentive uh, not to say I wasn't because it's still a requirement right to supervise the full self-driving experience it's still very much a requirement to have your eyes face forward uh, and supervise the car right so I think it really changes your perspective on how complacent or not you are so I've, I've prior to the previous incident in the last video I was finding myself to be you know relatively complacent in terms of letting the car do its thing especially in version 13 but now after that situation i do find myself monitoring a bit more um, similar to how i was when i first started with fsd a couple months ago back on early versions of 12 um, or maybe late 11. so 
you know, it does change your perspective and it's good to supervise. I mean, that's, um, it, they're not marketing this service yet as a fully autonomous car. It's just not what it is. So when you face a situation like that, in my example, the car decided to go on red and I intervened, you know, you, you, you must uh, continue to be attentive. And, um, you know, my message to everybody is make sure that you're still very much uh, supervising the vehicle and you're staying attentive and I would uh, you know I would say don't let that complacency um, settle in the best you can I, I would say it's very important to to not do that so you know it's um, it was definitely a scary situation but I'm gonna see if I can find that root cause like I said but apart from that overall it's great I mean I can't say good things about I can't say enough good things about 13 um, I did get a few comments asking about the park to FSD so you can start full self-driving now from a parked state quote-unquote um, and very easy to do that you just go back into your once you do install version 13 once that update is available for you uh, go into your car's settings go to autopilot and then you'll see there a little toggle something that says something similar that says um, FSD from park just enable that they give you also an option to toggle it from uh, from a brake engagement so you can either leave that on or off. Well, all that means is that if you leave that on, you have to tap the brake before FSD takes over. And if you disable that, then you can just literally press a button from your driveway, from your garage, from your parking spot, from your apartment complex, wherever you're starting your route. Um, just put it into your GPS, your destination's address, press a button, and then you're good to go. You don't have to engage the brake, accelerate or nothing. So I uh, opted in to disable the brake check. It just uh, makes it feel a lot more autonomous and um, kind of like a robo taxi feel really I mean you know where where it takes you from point A to point B without engaging any of the gears without shifting gears without grabbing the wheel you just put your destination in um, and if again if you disable that brake uh, check you don't have to even engage the brake system you just put the address in and you're good to go so but you can see right now I mean it it's very smooth uh, it's it's very confident and I've noticed that 13 is making decisions that um, I would make as a human, really. Like I, I, in, in version 12, there was situations in which it took the um, cautious route, which is good. That's normal, right? That's healthy for a autonomous vehicle to be cautious. Um, in 13, I'm seeing it make more decisions in terms of uh, choosing a lane that has less cars, um, driving past slower vehicles a lot more frequently that did happen a lot in version 12 but i'm noticing 13 is more confident in passing slower vehicles so it's overall it's just really interesting to see the the gap uh, and the progression between 12 and 13 it's just monumental so here we're approaching the highway this is going to be my first uh highway trip i have no doubt that it's going to do very well I'm going to be merging here on the left hand side and it's not the thing about 13 like i said in my previous videos it's not jittery it's it's when it commits to a decision it really makes that it really follows through with that decision and what, what i mean by that is i've noticed in previous versions prior to uh 13 especially in some incremental updates with uh version 12 it would choose a decision and then it would 50 percent commit to that decision and uh, sometimes it just uh, was very jerky and, and hesitated. Now it's just commits to the lane change, goes, it passes slower vehicles like I already said, and it chooses lanes with less vehicles. So it's just so confident. Um, so it's really, really cool to see that. Another um, comment I got was um, about the uh, going on red from previous video in terms of the uh, sensor being a bit dirty. So that's a really good point. I really appreciate that comment too. That, that got me thinking that um, maybe that situation was caused because the sensor was a bit dirty, right? Because I haven't actually gave the car a uh, proper wash in a few weeks. So prior to this drive, I actually ended up uh, going through a car wash just to ensure that everything's cleared, all the sensors are clean, and the uh, eyes of the Tesla can see out. So that was an interesting perspective too. I'm gonna try and replicate that situation where it went on red um, at that intersection. I'm gonna see if I can replicate it again. Hopefully I don't, hopefully the car learned from that mistake, but I'll see if I can replicate it uh, and you know see kind of what, what had happened. But overall, 
this is just an awesome update and I'm super, super excited to see the next incremental update for 13. All right, this is a really rapid break here. Took the far right lane and really quickly went to a, uh, a halt there almost. We went from about 65 down to probably less than 40 there. Not sure what had happened up, up ahead. We're gonna be getting, getting off of exit 20 here in 0.7 miles, so we should be merging off of the highway. And again, thanks for all the new subscribers. If you're new, thank you for your support. Um, and if you haven't already, consider liking this video and subscribing to my channel. I'm gonna be posting a lot more videos like this. Um, for me, it's uh, very interesting, and I, I love posting these videos because it really, I, I like putting the car into uh, stressful situations as best as I can, safely, of course, um, and then seeing how it reacts and ultimately sending reports back to Tesla if I need to. Uh, it's just very interesting to see the progression of, of these updates. And, um, you know, it's, it's very fun for me. So definitely expect more videos like this. Um, provide any feedback in the comments. We've just merged off of the highway here and we are about one mile away from the destination. So we're about three minutes out now. And um, so far, zero disengagement, disengagements on this route, which is great. Um, and I, I don't expect any. I mean, typically this version update has been very, very confident and stable. Uh, and very reliable, so I, I really don't see any um, any issues for for this version as a whole, really, generally speaking. Um, but again, my message to everybody out there is to stay vigilant and um, ensure that you're paying attention to to the road. Let me know down in the comments below. Has anybody had a situation in which they were really stressed out by a decision that the full self drive software made on their behalf? As an example, going through a red light or attempting to, um, maybe not stopping properly at a stop sign, something that's fairly critical. Let me know down in the comments because I'm, I'm interested to know how often this is happening if we're reducing the number of incidents that this is um, happening on or with. So definitely let me know down in the comments below. And uh, also, if anybody out there is considering buying a Tesla, let me know if you're interested in that 2025 Model Y refresh, the Juniper, that's coming out. That look, that car looks pretty interesting. I know that they had put out a new front-facing sensor for their Model Y refresh, so that's an interesting car. I think it looks pretty interesting from what the leaks show. Of course, we haven't seen it yet, um, but let me know down in the comments below if you're uh, interested in that car, if you're waiting for specifically for that model or not. Um, so we're getting on to the main road here and we are 0.9 miles away from the destination so we'll see how it does here we'll see if it parks at the destination as well i'd be curious to know if it uh if it follows through with the park or not typically in the in version 13 i've had success in uh, parking at the destination so it's really it really really feels like an end-to-end -end autonomous experience especially with the fsd from park feature where you don't have to engage the uh, gear shift gears um, gauge the brake and then when you get to your destination it parks so all that is just like it makes it really feel super super um autonomous and uh, i think that was the goal with this update and you know I, I think they really achieved that yeah so this is interesting too you can see it the vehicle is um creating a gap between the car and front because i think there's it's registering a exit ramp off that plaza there and so it's recognizing that cars may exit that plaza from that entrance and exit over there on the right. And so it's creating a gap in case somebody wants to squeeze by. Obviously this car did not do that. So if a car did want to squeeze by and into the far left lane, they can't do that because of this vehicle now. But it's cool to see that this car, the Tesla and the software is making that decision. That's interesting. You could even see here on the map, this exit into the plaza and entrance if somebody were to want to cut through these lanes, it's creating that gap for them to allow to for to allow them to do so. So that's really interesting. That's really cool to see. Merging here on the left into the left lane at the intersection. And then it looks like we will have a uh, green arrow type of intersection here. Definitely 
definitely a good amount of traffic here in uh, Dublin, Ohio. A bit more than uh, what I usually see. Probably right before the holidays though. So we do have the arrow pointing to the left here, so we're good to go. And then we should be making an immediate right as soon as we enter this plaza here and we do. Yep, we're definitely adhering to the route. We'll see if it parks. Be cool if uh, we can s capture that on video. I, I'm assuming it will since this is a significantly large and busy plaza with a lot of spots, so we'll see. All right, so here's a lot of cross traffic coming into our direction and from the side as well making this left very very nicely into the plaza we have a couple people here on the right hand side so it's uh, approaching cautiously very nice very nice very smooth not jerky at all so i'm noticing it's going about 11 miles per hour now that's 11 12 that's pretty pretty good i think that's something that i would pr pretty much i would do if i was driving i think maybe i would go a little bit faster but that's okay so we'll see here where it takes us um 50 50 chance whether it's going to park right in front of the building or if it's going to merge into one of the lanes here on the right to park itself ideally i'd like for it to park itself but we'll see so we do have a stop sign here no pedestrians so we should be clear Actually, there is a pedestrian here on the left, so we'll wait for that. We have a couple more people crossing here in the front as well. So quite a busy plaza here. Okay, not sure why it's going to the left. Okay, now it's going to the right. That was a little wonky there for a second. We have some people here on the right-hand side. So we'll see if they... Uh, pass by very very busy intersection here I mean plaza sorry okay so it is merging here into the parking lot and we might have a chance of it parking itself we will see okay it did not unfortunately so it just dropped us right in the front not sure why it decides that or if there's a setting I have to enable. If anybody knows, definitely leave that down in the comments below in terms of the vehicle parking itself at the destination or not. Is there a setting I have to enable? Because I've seen it do it sometimes and other times it does not. So again, thanks for tuning into today's video. We had pretty much a zero disengagement route for about 15 minutes or about seven to eight miles, which is awesome. Um, if you haven't already, like I said, I really appreciate all the new subscribers. And if you're not yet subscribed, consider doing so. We're going to be making a lot of POV style videos on FSD's version 13 and going forward as they release incremental updates. So again, thanks for watching and I'll catch you in the next video.